You have good Curb Your Enthusiasm. Can we start there? Sure. All right. Larry David was at my wedding, and uh, one of two things, well, you're one of the skits. Yeah. Um, two of the skits it's were from my wedding. Actually, three. Uh, Lee, uh, somebody ran into a window. He ran into, like, a glass door at my yes. wedding. That and is then real. the buffet line, why yep. are you coming back here when we all want to be where you are? <laughs> And uh, being on a charter and the wait, was that not the wait? What was it? No, um, I ended up driving us to the airport. Yeah. Yeah, and so he was all nervous because we were in Montana and the Wi-Fi, I mean, not the Wi-Fi, but like GPS stopped working. And he's literally the same person, like in the back seat going, oh my God, oh my God, and told me he was a taxi driver in New York. And I'm like, well, do you want to drive then? Yeah. And then we were plane schnorrs because he gave us a ride back yep. to LA. Wow. Yeah. So ripped from the headlines or your wedding onto, wedding onto the screen. He literally sat at our wedding and had, he would bring a notepad out when things were happening. We heard from some of the guests, like in a situation, yeah, well, my, my husband is a retired hockey player and so all the hockey players were really excited. Larry David was there and they were in the line for something, for dinner or whatever. There was like a buffet line. It was a chicken Parmesan station, okay? <laughs> and so one of the hockey players was like, wait, I wanna go back because he heard Larry David snickering with like a bunch of the guys. So one of the guys went back to him and he goes, what, why did you just come back here? You're where we wanna be. <laughs> why would you come? And he goes, well, cause you guys are all back here laughing. And so then Larry David took a notepad yeah. and started writing it and down. And there it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Wow. All right. So can we talk about like this going, like you guys, like a buddy act up here. Um, how did this all come about? Michael John. Strahan. Michael Strahan. Yeah. Michael yeah. Strahan. When Aaron moved over to Fox from ESPN and I kept hearing about Aaron, hearing about Aaron, he's like, you two are like going to be the best of friends, like out of the gate. And she was catching a ride. This is when Strahan was doing the shuttle for Kelly and Michael right. um, every week for Fox. And so we met literally on his plane on a red eye heading back. And it's, it's been pretty much friendship since then. And then we officially started working together eight years ago. Nine? Yeah, I don't even crazy. know. A long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so what does that look like in terms of, because you're a brand builder, I think it's fair to say. Um, you are building a brand, you have built a brand and continuing to do that. So what does that look like, Aaron? What, what does that decision look like to say, I'm a very successful broadcaster, I'm well known, et cetera, et cetera. Wait, can I interrupt you? I'm yes. sorry. Not only is she a very successful broadcaster, she received the Pat Summerall Broadcasters Legends Award for St. Jude's last night and was the first female to get yeah. that. Which I hope I can stop saying first females for things. Right. So. And I didn't pass out giving my speech. Guys, it was a big night. Um, <laughs> but what it looks like, I think, you know, as you bring up a broadcasting career, let's be honest, there's, you can only go so high, right? I mean, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be on Fox's A crew. We did Thursday Night Football in prime time. I've, I've done three Super Bowls. We'll do my fourth next year. You know, I've done a ton of college national championship games on college game day, which I was really thankful to be a part of. But it's kind of like, okay, so what can you do after that? And I felt like building my brand off the field, that's what it was all yeah. about. You know, what can I, what can I do? I have all this. It's like pretty woman. And now I need somebody to help me. Right. But I wasn't the girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 50 bucks, grandpa. <laughs> So, so Con, build on that in the sense that this is a playbook that Aaron, you've seen, and Con, you have helped implement that athletes have done. Well, and, and I saw that from Stray, right. right? He's the male version of what I wanted to be. But I mean, Stray, and I'm so appreciative of Con and Stray for this. But listen, I when I was working for ESPN, I actually danced on Dancing with the Stars, and I got a lot of you know crap for it in the media. Like, how could she be taken seriously? <clears throat> She's doing a cha-cha and sequins, and it's like, wait, why can I not be serious on the field and then do entertainment off of it? And Stray has done that and done that well, and Khan and Smack Entertainment has done a phenomenal job branding him with that. This guy is, is speaking about X's and O's on Sunday on the NFL pregame show, and then Monday through Friday is talking about cook, you know, cookouts, sitting down with George Clooney, Julia Roberts, and people respect him just the same, so why can't I? And right. Khan was you know, the gateway to that. That's not always how it was, not just for you, but also for athletes, you know? No, and, and no. so what was the, you've seen the turning point. What was the turning mm. point? I mean, obviously, Strahan is instrumental in that, but there are others who have, you know, whether it's LeBron and others who have sort of come along, yeah. who, have, who have really embraced that notion of being an empire unto themselves. 
What's the, are there catalytic moments where that becomes possible? What have you seen? For us, um, I mean, first of all, the bottom line is not everybody has the it factor. Mm. And, and so just because you want it doesn't mean you can attain it at the level that Michael and, and Aaron have or, or Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and, you know, a lot of our other clients in the family. But Aaron has it. Michael has it. And they also have the drive and the determination. And they're not smart for an athlete. She's not smart for a broadcaster. They are smart entrepreneurs who just needed somebody to, like, kick the door down and say, we are here. I mean, you know, if it was Cameron Diaz, we'd be up here drinking our wine. But we started this this clothing line together, Wear by Aaron Andrews, that was Aaron's idea. And I'm sitting up here, and I'm so thrilled to be here. But we have a whole team. Half of them are, are here today yeah. that we couldn't do what we do without a team. And I think that's also really important. But a lot of it has to start with the actual talent that they have to want to bust their butts because nothing comes easy, as everybody knows. And I think in this day and age with, with social media and access and so many people now are building their brand or say they're a brand that the competition is getting fiercer, that Aaron works harder than anyone besides Michael. I'd say they're neck and neck. But she actually, I think, beats him out on the clothing line, you know, entrepreneurial piece of it because twice a week, she's literally, I mean, not last season because of the, the um, restrictions, but she's bringing product to the games, visiting the store, you know, the team stores, visiting with the buyers. Who's doing that? You know, and now yeah. we just hear about a lot of other people in the business like, well, we want the clothing line, we want a line, and we're like, good luck, because Go no one for it. sees yeah. what, what goes into this. I mean, yeah. right so, now, yeah. So tell us about that, Aaron, because, I mean, you make a decision to get into this business, and everybody in this room knows, you guys know better than anyone, not, as you alluded to, Con, not an easy business. No. Why apparel? I thought it was going to be, right, guys? Remember that? <laughs> Remember how th easy I thought this was going to be? Right, Con? Why? Because I, I'm a huge sports fan. I, like I said, I went to the University of Florida, SEC. We are the mecca. We are crazy for our football. I worked on college game day. I was there with the fans. I saw how the women dressed. I see how women see how I dress on television. Half the time I'm getting tweets and DMs from men saying, where did, where did you get that coat? What is that top? My wife saw it. I want to surprise and give it to her for her birthday or Christmas. So, and, and then my husband, like I mentioned, I would go to the pro shop to buy things to wear to his games. I'm like, there's nothing here. You have this whole section for men and there's like three shirts for women and it's that gross V-neck that is not even stylish. So we actually, I don't know, God, at this point, it was like six, seven years ago, we were in San Francisco for Super Bowl and I was asked by the NFL to host a women's chalk talk and they wanted me to wear um, the, gear, the NFL apparel. And I had my stylist try to put some outfits together and we were like, it's fine, but I wouldn't really wear this. Yeah. I went back there, I, we started talking to, I think it was a GQ or a Vogue writer and, and I told her, I have this idea, I am that customer. I know these women, you know, I could wear this at games, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, alcohol's involved. We go, we have a lot of alcohol, We and we are at a table, and we start drawing on the table. And we start, I'm known as EA, EA Sports, and so we're like, let's use my name. What can we wear? Wear by Aaron Andrews. Wear NFL. Wear Rams. Wear Bengals. We are Cincinnati. There was like, again, a lot of alcohol. It worked. I, I call her, I'm like, we got to call someone about this. This is huge. <laughs> She's like, no one's going to work on money. No con. It took us forever. It, it did. For anyone to listen to us. Yeah. Yeah, there was actually one meeting that the buyer literally, that we were trying to you know, pitch and, and partner with said, I don't get it. Why you? Yeah. And it's quoting Pretty Woman when they're in Beverly Hills shopping. Big mistake. Huge. Yeah, with the right. shopping bags. They're like, look at us now. So, yeah. And, you know, I think that also just makes it sweeter the harder something is because we now, we started with the NFL, evolved to the NBA, NHL, about 20 teams in the NCAA, and we're going to roll out with baseball this summer. Right. And, it, it's, and it's fun. Like, you know, I mean, People from the Professional Bull Riding Association, which we're both fans of, are like, will you do our women's line? Um, and, and that's exciting. Yeah. What's exciting is today, it's the small victories, right? Last year, I think one of the coolest moments was Ava Hunt, um, Clark, or Clark Hunt's daughter, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs. They win the AFC championship, and she is in wear by Aaron Andrews, a sweater, a chief sweater, on the field doing snow angels in our confetti. And I just, like, I have goosebumps talking about it now. I called her crying, and I was like, you can't pay for PR like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just said, this is my lucky sweater. Today, Kelly Stafford is taking her two twins to Ram's Day at their, at their school, and Kelly's in our 
cropped, you know, sweatshirt, and we're like, holy shit. Yeah. But, yeah. And so, pivoting slightly, you know, part of what you're talking about is representation, being at the table, making your own way. I feel like we're talking a lot about that right now, about representation in the NFL. It's on everybody's lips. We talked to Arthur Blank about it earlier. We talked to Jason Wright. We talked to a lot of folks about it. You guys are inside this league in a very meaningful way. Con, what happens next? What I would needs go to so far to say leagues. I mean, yeah. we have, you know, Deion Sanders, who Aaron's also friends with, Coach Prime at Jackson State, who's getting turned down for jobs because he's like, I won't get that one, I'm black. And, and I look at him and I'm like, he's right. You know, you can't even argue it. So it's a systemic problem that's not even at the, most, the professional level. It's starting, you know, I, I can even take it. 15, 20 years ago, I helped Snoop Dogg start the Snoop Dogg Football League because he was just trying to coach his sons and they lived in Orange County and the other league was like, mm, we don't want you here. And we're like, okay, cool. Yeah. I called up Commissioner Tagliabue, Commissioner, now Commissioner Goodell, and Snoop's now got a dozen kids in the NFL that came through that league and, you know, thousands made it to college. So we're not the ones that can fix it. I mean, we can point out the issues, but yeah. it's, it's got to start, I think, even going back you know, years and years. How do they fix it, Aaron? I mean, you're asking these questions, I know, of... She's asking the questions, she can't answer yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the sad part. I, yeah. I, You know, I think people just need to start listening. They need to start communicating. We've seen that in the last couple weeks, um, you know, be brought to the forefront. I, I think a lot of discussions need to be had, a lot of open-mindedness, a lot, you know. I, I guess one interesting thing that is a through line through this whole conversation is there is, whether we're talking about you or whether we're talking about some of your other um, partners, there is a power shift, it does feel like, going on. The players feel more empowered over the last couple of years. Fans, in some ways, feel even more empowered. Do you agree with that, Aaron? I mean, do you feel like there's more of a sense of both urgency and, and maybe folks who are more willing to sort of stand up and call for change? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, and I think social media has helped that. It gets the message. It gets their own message out, how you want to do it. I mean, we've had situations, unfortunately, in my career or, or other people's career, we can control how the message is, you know, delivered. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so what's the, what's the next big idea in this venue of whether it's a broadcaster, whether it's an athlete, like what's the next level? How do you level people up even further, Con? Great question. Oof. I mean, I would like to say we're doing it now, right? I mean, the fact that we just were able to now have all the major professional leagues with this line and we're fighting every day for more real estate per se, you know, it, it yeah. never ends. So I think building off of the existing base and now Erin's venturing into the scripted world. She's shopping a show um, that, that's loosely based on, on her life, inspired by. So the sky's the limit, and, and that's what's really exciting to me, especially with all the content buyers now and in, in, in places like that. Yeah. And how do you think about it, Erin? I mean, in the sense that you, again, sort of leveled up in, in some ways into a business builder. I have to imagine things are coming at you now. Yeah. To, con yeah. to consider, you're making your own choices. Right. How do you choose? How do I choose? Well, I, I have fantastic guidance. I mean, right. again, it's it's not BS. I really do look at Michael and, at, you know, it, they've been doing scripted for a while now. I kind of had this idea for a show. I, I'm in the right spot in terms of management and said, hey, I ha have this idea, you know, so we all work together. Where, you know, where could this be written? How do we deliver? Who could, like, who could we pitch it to? I really do. I have great, uh, you know, an example out of him. I, my publicist rep represents Kevin Hart. I love to see what he's doing yeah. as well. So kind of been like, all right, this is what the guys are doing. How can I make it my own? Right. And so who else do you see out there? I mean, you, you mentioned Coach Prime, which I think is such an interesting oh, yeah. um, example of someone who, I mean, talk about reinvention. <laughs> over, and over, mean, and over, over and over and over and over and over again. Good. And like, how does that... What are those conversations like? 
and how does that happen? Yeah, what are those conversations <laughs> like, Con? I don't think I can repeat all of them here in this audience. Um, just from how he decided to go to that level or yeah. what's next or, yeah. you know, similar to our relationship with, with Aaron, everything with Coach Prime, it, it's, it's teamwork. You know, decisions aren't just made and then we have to catch up, we hope, that, you know, most of the time. <laughs> but what he's doing right now is groundbreaking on so many levels yeah. and it's not just about oh he wants to be a winning coach i mean travis hunter flipped from his alma yeah. mater to go to an hbcu where the resources are so limited it's no joke when you hear people talking about this um i mean obviously you hear about some of the bigger schools like getting these huge you know multi-million dollar grants but that's two schools yeah there's hundreds of hbcus and people here in california aren't really familiar with them so it's a lot of education and, and things of that nature but we've done a fabulous job of, of getting brands involved that if um like he's in the athletic commercial with coach saban that for, for both of us was just such a huge get because it was a stamp of approval in yeah. the coaching world. And then it also, yeah. um, we bring Affleck to the table. So whether right. they're stepping in to help with the kids camp, you know, cause it's not just about winning on the field. We do a lot off the field. We're doing speaker series for the kids. Um, Wale who was here before, he did the financial one, which was amazing. And now that everyone's so used to a Zoom, we're gonna, um, send those out to the whole SWAT conference or MEAC conference and anybody that yeah. wants them. It's not just about Jackson State. Yeah, and we're running low on time, but but it's funny, Aaron, to think about your background both as a journalist but also as a proud SEC alum. Like, the whole shift in the college landscape yeah. with NIL, with so everything that's going on. I mean, as business people, you must look at that and start to think – that's a whole new world in, in in some ways. Do you do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. Because we couldn't gift athletes wear, right. you know, for NCAA, and now that broadens like our entire team and what we can do with them. And I know you guys have seen that with Dion's son as well. So absolutely. And we're also like for for wear, we're we're also very conscious of what our brand is. So instead of just going to the HBCUs and saying, hey, like we're gonna just make a line for you, we're working with all the. Um, the, the dance teams and the marching bands, the, the females, and saying, what? how do we partner with you, yeah. you know, to help and give something back to them and, and then do a whole line for the HBCUs. Like, that's next on the list for us. All right, a little bit of a curveball for you, Aaron. Just I love it. Just talking about college. Um, the economics of college football it's at this crazy. point are insane. Mm -hmm. um, NIL obviously has changed it, but the reorganization in Texas and OU moving into, the, into your old territory does it hit some breaking point at some point is there a bifurcation of college football like from a business perspective how do you think about it i think there's gonna have to at some point and this was a huge topic i know just watching my former um colleagues at espn discuss it i think there needs to be a president there needs to be a commissioner that rules this whole thing because it was a bit out of control and yeah. i've even heard nick saban who is my you know i'm a florida gator but i'm naming my first kid saban after him because winner um <laughs> baller so yeah he even said at some point we're gonna have to look at this and figure it out and it it just all happens so yeah. fast yeah yeah what do you think hon i mean especially given your experience with coach i mean coach prime is now sort of seen this from a different perspective i gotta think stray thinks about it too like there's got i would imagine it opens up a new business area for you to some extent we did yeah. we, we now have somebody who's a registered agent in the state of mississippi um in the company we had to catch up as fast as possible because we're doing the nil deals for as many of the kids on the team that want them um and we're not exclusive like we're just you know just trying to help guide these kids and also make sure that the sharks that are circling these kids yeah. they're that we're trying to protect them and teach them about the most basic fundamentals that a lot of them don't know like paying your taxes, you know, when you get these yeah. deals and, and just make sure when you sign something, a lawyer looks at it because some of the, these companies have these kids, God willing, send them go into the NFL. It's taking them all the way through the NFL yeah. and they just don't know. So yeah. it's a lot of education. And I think walking the fine line between the NCAA sitting back and watching and laughing a little bit like, oh, okay, they're not yeah. feeling bad. Yeah. But it's also for us, we're on the front lines with, with kids. Like we did, a, um, we donated um, custom suits last season for through our straight hand suit collection. And I say 80 to 90% of the kids was their first suit, you know, and then Dion's son Shador was the first NIL deal with Beats by Dre. 
a majority of those kids, it was their first pair of beats. So for us, we're really enjoying it and, and just seeing the appreciation and just want these kids to win in life. Yeah. It's another sort of power shift that seems to be yes. going on. Mm -hmm. um, so very grateful to you both. Have a great Super Bowl weekend. You too. Thanks. Hey, if you guys want any Super Bowl gear for you ladies, we've got our Super Bowl shirt. Look at Little that. Cow. Available on yes. Fanatics. <laughs> goes with a pink suit if you feel like being Reese Witherspoon. You know? Exactly. Or and on thefellshop.com. And I yep. like the kicks here, too. Well, you know. You know we've it. given up on the Louboutins. Yeah. Yeah. This is Not interesting. Yeah. Much better. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody.